Joining us via Skype from Florida is filmmaker, writer, producer, and teacher Raj Amit Kumar. He joins us to talk about his first feature film called Unfreedom. Thank you so much for joining us, Raj. Thank you for having me, Sneha. It's our pleasure. Um, so your film, Unfreedom, deals with issues of identity. On one hand, you're dealing with Muslim identity and Muslim fundamentalism. And on the other hand, you're dealing with homosexual identity. Now, both these tie into a common theme of um, identity issues, but they're very different in nature. So I'm curious to know how you weave both these into one film. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So I guess the, the film deals in essence with the identity issue uh, in, in, in a way that, you know, we all are, uh, you know, we all have many different identities, but when violence in today's world is inflicted on us, it's, it's kind of inflicted in name of, you know, we are being boxed into being called either a homosexual or a Muslim yeah. or, or, or a belonging to certain caste or a certain, certain religion or a certain creed, certain race. Uh, film deals with that idea. Film deals with that concept. That sort of, sort of kind of was uh, the, the the underlying philosophy mm -hmm. behind it. Mm -hmm. And so, so it was on purpose that I chose to uh, separate identities into two different geographies, right. um, and yeah. and created parallel characters and events and weaved them together. So that was that was intentional goal pretty much behind the film. Sure. And uh, what are the two different geographies that you're dealing with in the film? Where, where are the two stories um, based? The, the story that deals with Muslim identity and terrorism takes place in New York. And the story that deals with homosexual LGBT identity um, takes place in uh, New Delhi. Sure. And I kind of want to uh, pick your brain a little more as to why you chose these two themes uh, for your debut film. No idea. <laughs> You were you just know, inspired. Of, it was your gut. No, it's it's uh, usually what we, uh, I think, any artist or filmmaker, mm -hmm. what we make is something that uh, that bothers or something that we want to express to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, religious violence uh, has always bothered me. Sexual violence has always bothered me, and and you know those were the topics that I wanted to deal with. Um, I have grown up. Uh, in Muzaffarnagar, India, mm -hmm. I've grown up seeing Hindus and Muslims killing each other. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I just kind of um, hate the concept of religion. Um, I, I just really wanted to address and express a, a story that kind of uh, shows that how we are we uh, are in a prison that's sort of created by our ourselves. You know. Sure. Um both the, the issues that you've chosen are very relevant, especially in today's day and age, but they're also very sensitive and uh, maybe considered controversial by many. You know, that said, uh, your film has uh, faced some opposition from the censor boards in India. Um, were, was, was the censor board ever in mind when you were making this film? Did it ever guide or influence your artistic or creative decisions and choices? Uh, well, it, 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 it is in mind of every filmmaker and mm -hmm. more so now, uh, I mean, more so now with the recent government uh, coming in in India and, and everything getting banned. Uh, soon apples will be banned also. I don't know why that would be, but, you know, they might find a reason for that. Mm -hmm. But what it's like, so, so you know, it is, it's when you're making film in India, you always know that you have to go through a censor board, uh, which may ask you, uh, you know, this cut or that cut. So uh, I was aware of it. Ha did it guide my, uh, you know, what I should make or how I should make mm -hmm. it? No, it didn't mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I don't think I come from that place. Um, unless we push the boundaries, mm -hmm. unless we make what we want to make, uh, unless we do not give in to what, uh, what is being asked for us to make uh, or allowed us, allowed us to make is... Uh, I, I, I don't see any, any kind of change in terms of art and culture happening and hence in society happening. So, no, it, it, uh, it, it in fact, even uh, I was a little stubborn mm -hmm. uh, that this is, this is the only way I wanted to do it. Sure. Um, the film was released uh, in North America on May 29th. 
but you know a large audience in India hasn't been able to see this film are you concerned that you're missing out on that audience well I can be concerned I can be angry I can be upset you know but uh, how it's, it's, it's not it's it doesn't change anything uh, all you do is put up a fight so mm -hmm. we are we are uh, showing the film to uh, to uh, in in small groups like we're doing several private screenings which okay. Um, uh, you know, we, we cannot charge people admission, we cannot release it in a big way, which is, which is what in any case censor board uh, or, or the authorities want because, you know, you, you want to put such filmmakers in such a financial uh, disadvantage right. that uh, next time when a, when a production company or next time when a filmmaker wants to go out and make a film like that, they have to think 20 times but uh, we are we are going to court we are we are doing what we can there we are doing private screenings but you know i mean it it, it is uh, it is it is a huge disappointment mm -hmm. that uh, that few jokers sitting in censor board can decide for the rest of the country you know what uh, what they should see and for for filmmakers like us what we should uh, make or should not make it's just a sad situation and coming back to the release in North America, what has been the response from the audience? Well, look, the film is, <coughs> it's, a, it's a divisive film, mm -hmm. you know, it's either people really love it or people hate it and they mm -hmm. cannot stand, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it's, I guess, it's polarizing, you always, yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, you always, you know, uh, when, when you just don't want to make any kind of compromise in terms of what you want to say, uh, I, I was not playing politically correct um, uh, situation here, you know, I just wanted to say something and I said it uh, and it bothers a lot of people but those who sort of kind of see through what the film is trying to say uh, really, really love it. So that has been the reaction anywhere. I mean, and I see it, it, it strangely so, uh, you know, the, the youth of India mm -hmm. is pretty much in the film. I haven't, I haven't shown film. In, I mean, there has been like thirty to thirty-five screenings already in India, of of the film, and I haven't, I haven't been or known a, a single screening filled with uh, Indian youth, mm -hmm. and and they have, they have not loved it. So, so in that sense, I have, uh, I have a hope, you know. Sure. Um, have you yeah. taken it to any of the festivals in the U.S.? Yes, I mean the film has been screened in about ten, twelve festivals now, and it continues to. I mean, we still we still are showing to more festivals and all that. So it opened in um, uh, International Film Festival of Kerala in India, mm -hmm. uh, but you know it ha it has been traveling festivals even in Australia, US, and, and India. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, I want to talk about the cast um, of your film. In particular, the two people who stand out for me are Adil Hussain and Victor Banerjee, whose work I really admire. Um, what was it like uh, working with two um, established and fantastic actors like them? Uh, it, it was it was great. It, it was wonderful. Both are are very very professional actors. I mean, this is what you know. I I I uh, I, I tell all the new actors this mm -hmm. thing is like you 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 meet new actors and you see how big of a diva they are and you know how much tantrums they have and all not you know and and the, here are these you know people who have achieved uh, a lot who have worked with the best and you still you know they're they're the most professional always on time do, mm -hmm. do their job uh, and and you know and so I, th I think the new generation of actors uh, and filmmakers and any kind of artists need to need to learn from uh, from such performers and I guess they are also there Partly, not not just because of the talent they have, not just because you know what they deliver in their performance, but also their professionalism. So it was it was great working. Yeah. And um, the sound design was done by Oscar winner Resul Pukati, who also did the sound design for Slumdog Millionaire. How did you get him on board? It was pretty easy. I just <laughs> I just <laughs> picked up the phone uh, and gave him a call. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, it was not easy to access, but, you know, right. once I had uh, sent him the script mm -hmm. and uh, actually Hari Nair, who's, uh, who did the camera on on the film, and he's, he's again, a very prominent uh, cinematographer, you know, he, they were, uh, they, they, had, they had worked together in past and known each other, they both are from Kerala, you know, mm -hmm. that's another thing. So, so Hari introduced me and uh, after me sending him the script and telling him about the film, he was on board uh, with it. I don't, I don't think Rasul is that 
tough uh, to uh, to reach out to as long as the project is good right. as long as i mean you know he's he he works with many independent filmmakers sure um i want to talk a little bit about your production company uh, called dark frames um tell us a little bit about um the company and what kind of work you focus on I think I'm focusing on everything that can be banned. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good place to start. At least you're very specific in your objective. <laughs> right. Specificity is a good thing. <laughs> so, so my next project is called Ayodhya. Okay. And uh, uh, if people know, in 1992, there was a Babri Mosque mm -hmm. demolition uh, happened in India and that polarized the country, uh, a country that was uh, known to be, you know, a, a most secular uh, democracy turned suddenly into this Hindu fundamentalist wave and that that continues to be the case. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a very important uh, time in Indian history yeah. um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm making a, how should I put it, a Shakespearean drama mm. set in the contemporary politics of India around the Babri Mosque demolitions and the title of the film is called Ayodhya. So that's sort of my next project. Very interesting. Um, well. It was a pleasure having you on our show. Um, thank you so much for joining us and we wish you all the very best in your future endeavor. And of course, with your film Unfreedom, hope that reaches more people and sends across the important message that you're trying to convey. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sunia. Thank you for having me.